Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jerry, and I've been working with UTEC on an innovative way to recycle all the parts of a mattress. And a quick background on UTEC. They're a nonprofit that is based out of Lowell. They help the youth between the ages of 15 and 25 who are heavily gang, crime-related. They take them off the streets. They give them employment. They mentor them. And when they go into the UTEC facility, their education, they stay in school longer, they have a job. UTEC really does take care of them. And they reduce the criminal activity in both Lowell and Lawrence through this. And it just really helps that age group not proceed with the crime that is on the streets. But the problem that UTEC is facing right now is their mattress recycling service. They're only recycling about 85% of the mattress. When somebody recycles a mattress, they expect that 100% of it is going to be recycled. And that's where I'm coming in. I'm working on getting 100% of it recycled. I mean, 10 million mattresses are thrown away each year, and that's getting in landfills and just staying there. And it's a real big problem. And every customer now wants to be eco-friendly. And they really just, that's really what we're striving to do. But when they get thrown away, there are long-term effects. And that 15% is still going into landfills that UTEC is recycling. The opportunity is to repurpose that 15% of the mattress. There's, for every 10,000 matches that are recycled, it takes out a football field of landfill space. And UTEC alone does that, and that's just, that's just out of blow. Over the whole country, a lot are being recycled, but nobody has ever done anything with this material. We want to reuse this waste. When we reuse this waste, it's going to have a lot of positives. It's going to increase the employment for the community of Lowell and Lawrence, because we're going to be able to bring people in to use this new system. It's going to increase revenue for UTEC, which is good because it's a nonprofit. They hold, they do a lot of things for the community, and which one of the things is increase the recycling process. The solution is to reuse the shock pad. Now, this is the material that is being thrown away. It comes in a blanket that's the size of the mattress, and right now it's just being thrown away. Nobody anywhere has figured out a use for this. What we have right here are some prototypes. We have one thing which is like a sunglass case, pop them in here, and it's just, there's a lot of usable options. We have a wallet that has different material inside, and we have an iPad case. So these are just some prototypes. This is just, we've sewed some things together with an outsourced uh, sewer, and she's, we work together to design these. Our real vision is a self-sewing DIY kit. And something that we've been working on is a self-sewing slipper kit. It's going to come with the needle, it's going to come with thread, it's going to come with instructions, or even thinking about a YouTube video, just on how to put it together yourself. So you have everything you need to just create something yourself out of this material. With that, it's going to take, it's going to be able to use all that material that was being thrown away and just solving this one problem. In Lowell, it can go across the world and people can really see that this is an issue, but it can be resolved. It's an innovation and Something like Etsy is where it could be sold. It's a real, I don't know if you guys know what it is. It's an e-commerce site, but you can, a lot of DIY things are on that. It's huge right now. We're going to be recycling. It's going to be a recycled product and a do-it-yourself product. Those are two major categories that are really booming in this day and age. The resources that we have, um, UTEC is a huge resource for me as I've been building this. Ed Frechette, he's a, kind of a leader of innovation over there. He's been getting me in contact with a lot of people, including Diane, who does so these prototypes for us. And without, without these resources, we'd be really gonna get it done. But we only did that with $1,000 grant money. To move forward, we really do, we do need a lot to happen. We need a research and development. We need to figure out the packaging. We wanna outsource to India and China where there's some connections to get the sewing costs way lower. And there's just a lot of things that do need to happen, but we know it can. And we know it can make a huge change in the community, for UTEC, for the whole mattress recycling, 100% of it can be used. You know, I mean, we, we figured it out, we just got to make it happen at this point. Yeah, thank you for your attention, and now I'm open to the So this, that pad, um, when a mattress is being recycled, I assume it's relatively old, 10 years old or so, right? Yes. <laughs> Does this pad get dirty over the course of those 10 years? Does it need to be cleaned or prepped or anything? So that is how it came out of the mattress. UTEC does have what's called a hot trailer, and that can sanitize any materials and hold about 40, 40 mattresses and sanitize them pretty quickly. So if they do need to be cleaned, they have a process to do so. But that is how it comes out. 
Now, when you're when you said that you were um, when you said that you wanted to make these into a, like a do it yourself sewing kit, is that they buy everything or, or yeah? So the so yeah, did well, you take so you would actually send them just like a square of this, and then they would figure out how to pull, with instructions they pulled yeah. it. Yeah, okay. they have the needle, they have the thread, so we give them. They wouldn't need an external like anything. They have everything to do with themselves with the instructions, so they can just build it themselves. Yeah. Uh, people feel accomplished when they do something like that. Tell me about the construction of the mattress. So, like, where is this pad? Because I've never taken this pad is mattress. typically on the bottom. Some people call it fire retardant. It kind of is like an extra cushion too. It's mostly found in like college beds, uh, typically any home bed. Hospital beds, not really, but they mostly take household beds and college beds, but it is at the bottom, and then it would go springs, foam, and then any type of material on top. And what they do, bail the foam and bail the steel, and they do get that recycled, and they, get, uh, they do get make money from that. This also already looks like it's been recycled. Why can't it be recycled again? Well, we just didn't want to grind it down again, as I'm, I don't know, contacted a few recycling plants. What connects the fibers is something called thermoplastic. Yeah. I contacted one of them and they wouldn't take it. And any textile recycler, they really can't do anything with it because they're really looking for like shirts and like just stuff like that. So and that was a harder process, so we just went into sewing and created this. And is it just the entire 15% that's not being recycled? Yeah. That's it. Because mm -hmm. the foam, they do get money for it, not much. Okay. And <laughs> they get the steel, the cotton, they bail as well. But this sheet is in pretty much all the mattresses and can't figure out what to do. So is the goal, your real goal just, you're not really trying to make money, you're just trying to find a way to get, money get rid of it. Yeah, because when they're throwing it away, they're really losing money because the labor, they got to transport it and then they pay to take it away. So really just trying to figure out how to get rid of it. But Seem like this is a pretty good process. So in one mattress, so it's so let's say you have a twin size bed and mm -hmm. it's got what's the weight of that? I'm I'm thinking about your thought about shipping it overseas to sell it. It might cost you more to ship it overseas. Yeah, that's what we're figuring out. It is pretty bed. light, but we're just shipping over like a few blankets right now just because we have a few sofas over there. But the cost is really up in the air because it is far away, so right. we're really trying to yeah, figure really it out. You really have to do that lady cost mm -hmm. thing. But I mean, if we can figure out how to, if it's easy enough to cut up here, we can create those jobs for more kids in here to just right. take care of themselves. That's right. I we ship model, the quarry model, yeah. uh, ship it to China, brought it back to us, and we can fabricate it. Yeah. Really? So, uh, uh, we're ship it. Yes. In boats. In boats. Yeah. 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 What's it made out of? This, so, so it's made out of like a lot of different fibers. It's a recycled product. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of different compounds put together. Each one has a little bit of different, like there's some like metallic fibers, some cotton fibers, but the only similarity between them all is the thermoplastic chemical. That just keeps it all together. So you can't really even melt it or burn it or anything. Yeah, you can melt it or anything. And you mentioned that it's used for a fire retardant. Is there that's actually? Been told. Oh yeah. Is there actually any chemicals that are fire retardant, or is it? We, we're it? still testing it. It's been kind of hard to find testing for it. I've mm -hmm. contacted on campus a few times, and I've been trying to figure out exactly what makes up the material. And the only thing that I've gotten back is the fire retardant chemical and the thermoplastic chemical. So there is a fire retardant chemical. How about insulation? Yeah, it can, it can be used as an insulation. I know some um, cars have sound deadening, which is a very similar material to what's inside the mattress. I, that's that's a, I swear, I think I've seen cars torn open. Yeah, you see it's a lot of the times in the front, yeah. they're the same in different Yeah, sound deadening too, would be insulation yeah. over heat insulation. Mm -hmm. We've looked into that as well. But why didn't that work out? It's, I mean, I've contacted a few and they're like, we can't do anything with it, and we won't take it. So, I mean, I'm sure somebody will. It's just a process. I just got to find it. Maybe a local heating cooling desk as a trial. Yeah. So, and just again, a broader question on the existing mattress 
recycling program. So, mm -hmm. how do you get the memories? So, they pick them up about a few times a week. So, you guys have a vehicle? Yeah, they, they got a truck and they okay. have workers on it and they just get them off the, they keep them on the sidewalk and they recycle them and it costs $15 for somebody to recycle a mattress. So, someone, do they call you tech? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an online work? platform too. Okay, online. And is there, uh, how is that promoted? Uh, it's, I, it's promoted, I know, on the website. I've seen it on Facebook, I've seen it on Instagram too. But that's just where I've seen it, and on campus. I know they're really well known around here. I'm not sure how much more advertising they do. But their main, their, a lot of the big supplies is obviously from the hotels and the colleges. They, they have a few of those a year where they just do real big truckloads of them. So they have an endless stream. Yeah, they, they're so always getting matches. It's about 200 a week. So, so what are you looking for for funding and what would you do with it? With the funding, it would go into more research and development into this to see if the sewing can, it can work as an option. And we'd have to figure out if we want to do the DIY thing, we'd want to figure out packaging, we uh, get the needles, get everything for that, make sure it works. And it would just be continuing funding on top of any of the new ideas, whether it be the insulation or anything else that would go into taking Taking care of recycling the mattress. And so, what would you what would you actually when you say R and D? What would you actually spend the money on? We would spend it on more testing to figure out exactly what is in it and see how it reacts. We would research more design options for it to sell, and then research to see if it can be used as an alternative source as well, like the sound deadening or insulation. And how much money do you think you need to to get to the next step? Um, from what I did out, which was just like rough, um, I was, it was closer to 10 grand in total. And I was just um, based on the sewing part. I hadn't looked at the insulation or anything deeply. Mm -hmm. I focused on this mostly. Have you run this by UTEC? I mean, yeah. it seems like UTEC is a fairly large organization. Mm -hmm. And if you're only looking for 10 grand, that might be something they can swipe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've talked to them and they really wanted me to come here and I don't know, I don't know what their financial situation is, they okay. I'm not going to ask that. So do people sell? I'm sorry? Do people sell? Yeah, people sell. So the do-it-yourself kit, how, who would that, that be that market? Well, I know like the do-it-yourself is really big online. So okay. e-commerce e would be huge. Okay. And I know the Etsy set is all handmade stuff. And okay. I've known a few people who sell a lot of stuff on that. So that would probably be a big platform. I know there's a local history um, textile museum. Yeah. So that could be an the option as well. Museum, yeah, yeah, so there's a few options to get it so to market. Don't, don't uh, hold your breath on the textile museum. They no longer exist. Oh, yeah. They, have, they closed about a year ago. And all that stuff is being dispersed all over the world, it's criminal. But they, their funding just was very difficult. So what's the motivation to get other than be greener? What's the motivation to get from 85 to 100%? Is there, is there some funding or something that UTech is looking for to say, hey, we 100% do this, would they get less mattresses if, or more mattresses? They What's could, the, but the big issue is it's costing them money to just get rid of it, and they want to get it, rid of it for no cost. So they're just losing money by just throwing away this material. In reference machinery is needed? That's if we do it in-house, okay. because, I mean, I'm we would need things in house to build an extra spot for people to come in and sew and take care of that side of the process for the recycling. So, 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 so you envision maybe buying some equipment to do something on site in Utah, mm -hmm. as well as the sending material out in raw, or does that have to prepare the raw material you send out through Well, it's kind of comparing costs, because like if we can get it cheap overseas, we would do it there, and it's more expensive to do it over there, that's yeah. where the, we would need real, real big money to make it happen at UTEC because of the machinery and employment and all that stuff. Okay. I can talk, they just got clobbered with a huge fine, but you can go talk to Unwrapped yeah. and with them. No. They're right in the acre. They're basically a sewing operation. Okay. 
And just, just to be clear, student at UMass Lowell, not an employee of UTEC. So. So how did you find that this was a problem? Like, were you volunteering at UTEC? Um, a semester to explain any criminal background. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good, good call. Yeah. Good so about a semester ago, um, I did a project on uh, the cotton part for, for um, the class, Professor okay. Anton's class. And I worked with a group on that, and we pretty much did um, a bunch of an analysis on mm -hmm. how to bail it, how much, where to send okay. it, where, how much, what you need to bail it. Yeah. And then they came to me and asked if I wanted to do an independent study, so to get credits and work on a further project. And this is the project, but we have a real viable solution towards it. So, I mean, it's really interesting to me just because, yeah. I mean, there's a big issue that nobody has figured out, but we, we have the solution. And you've done, like, lots of internet searches and stuff, and then called, you haven't found anybody. numerous people, and they're just like, yeah, we just, we just toss it. What's your major? I'm a business manager. So UTAC came to me to talk, think about the possibility of having students work on this thing. I teach a couple of classes, the capstone classes, and Kerry was in my class last fall, and so I asked him to do the independent study for this semester. Okay, so that's the Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.